We've already discussed how the entropy of a, of a liquid is going to be greater than the entropy of the corresponding solid and a gas will be even greater than the liquid. But what if we want to put numbers on the entropy changes that occur with phase transitions? Well, it turns out that's a very easy calculation. Here's why. If we transfer heat to, a, to an object, and that's all we do, we're not talking about reactions now where we change the nature of the substance, you know, what, what, what compound it is, we're talking about just adding heat to something. So if all we're doing is adding heat to something, then if we do it reversibly, the change in entropy is going to be the heat that we transfer divided by the temperature. So there's a couple caveats here to, to make this thing be true. This has to be, if we're at constant T, And uh, this is if the heat transfer occurs reversibly. And for our purposes, we'll define a reversible change as one where the system and the surroundings are at approximately the same temperature. Okay, so if we transfer heat reversibly uh, to something, we can calculate the entropy change just by using the heat and the temperature. Now, often, we'll be working at constant pressure. So if we impose constant pressure, then the heat transfer is going to equal the change in enthalpy delta H. So we can substitute that in and say delta S is going to be delta H over T. And if you think about a phase transition, it's going to meet all these criteria. When we do a phase transition like melting, we're doing it at some pressure, so the pressure is constant, and the temperature doesn't change while the phase transition is taking place. So for instance, if you're melting ice, once you start melting, you're at zero, and you stay at zero until all the ice is gone. So all throughout the phase transition, the temperature hasn't changed. And if you're boiling water at 100 degrees C, you know you, you stay at 100 degrees C until all the water is boiled. Uh, so a phase transition is something we can we can do this with. So for instance, we can say that I'll just put a couple phase transitions here. But the the change in entropy of a substance when we when we melt it be the entropy of fusion. So we just divide the enthalpy of fusion by the temperature, and we can do the same thing with with any phase transition. So we could do that with vaporizing, for instance. So we'd have to use the the enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, now we have to be careful. When I talked about the temperatures for the phase transitions, for instance, with water, I said that the, I mentioned the temperature in, temp, in, in degrees C. That's not what we want to use here. This has to be the absolute temperature. So let's make a note here that we're talking about the absolute temperature. In other words, the temperature in Kelvin is what we're interested in here. Okay, so common mistake is to try to plug in Celsius. And you can see, just by looking at the mathematics of this, that that would, that would make no sense, because this would mean that if your compound melted at a negative uh, Celsius temperature, that your delta S would be negative for melting something. Of course, that's nonsense. All right, um, so without belaboring that point, let's do a quick example. So let's say we're going to melt some butane. So butane is just a hydrocarbon. It's C4H10. So it's just a, it's just a straight chain of carbon atoms uh, with, with hydrogens on it. And we look up some data and we see that the, the process has a heat of fusion of 4.66 kilojoules per mole. And the temperature at which we melt is going to be negative 137 degrees C. And that's the data we're given. So see delta S is going to be the heat of fusion divided by the temperature. And we have to be careful the temperature at which we, we melt temperature at which that phase transition occurs. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put this in joules per mole. So we've got 4,000 
660 joules per mole. Our temperature, uh, entropy, you know, as units of joules per Kelvin, and I mentioned earlier you want to convert this to Kelvins. So we know the temperature in Kelvins is going to be the temperature in degrees C plus 273.15, okay. in which the last bit's not going to matter for the amount of sig figs we have. But anyway, so for us, that's going to be a temperature of a positive 136 Kelvins. So don't be confused that this number and this number are approximately the same. That's, that's just a coincidence. So what we've done is we've added 273 to our degree C to get our temperature in Kelvins. Okay, so now we're going to divide and get our answer, and we get that it's a positive 34.3 joules per mole for Kelvin. So that tells us if we take one mole of butane and it's already at its melting point, and all we do is, is melt it to, from solid to liquid, this is how much the entropy of that butane is going to change. And if you think about it conceptually, what's happening? We're loosening the IMFs between the molecules, and so the molecules are now free to um, rotate, the bonds are free to rotate, the molecules themselves can, can rotate and move around, and so because of that, they have way more microstates than they did in the solid state. So more microstates means more entropy. So the delta S for melting is a positive number.